I'll be talking about HTML5 uh, forms. Now, if you're not really familiar with HTML5 forms, load this URL up so you can follow along at home. Um, I will cover some of the basics, but it's really this one's an awesome site just to get you going if you're really not familiar with what's going on. It's more of a reference than a tutorial, but it shows you uh, what different controls do in different browsers and what you can, can and can't get away with. But just a really quick recap. Um, some of the awesome new input types. This one's email, which uh, gives you custom keyboards in iOS and uh, certain Android devices. If you are using Android and it doesn't work for you, then you can try to upgrade if your carrier lets you. Uh, but good luck. Tell for telephone. I mean, with these new types, there is some validation already, depending on your browser and version and things like that, but it's pretty inconsistent. So sometimes it will validate and actually give you some basic telephone validation, but what's the telephone between different countries and things like that? So for the most part, what they really do is just get you a custom keyboard. So they're useful for that, but doesn't really make much difference. Since they fall back to standard text input types, there's no loss of actually doing this. If the client doesn't recognize um, what the input type is, then it doesn't really make much difference. Numbers slightly different in that on supported browsers, it will do some validation sometimes, a bit more than the others, but yeah, it's still a bit patchy. And date time, there's date time, year, and a few others like that. Um, don't use them uh, because it depends what you're doing. If you're writing something like a native iOS thing where you're using a web view and cheating and just putting your HTML in there, it's great because you do get a custom controller for choosing a date. But for the most part, they're pretty useless. Um, W3C is actually marked it as in danger uh, because the support for it is that bad that uh, it'll probably get be gotten rid of. It's really unfortunate because there are that many bad date pickers out there. Uh, it would be really nice if the browser vendors could actually create their own and you know, leave us developers off to do more ex exciting things. But this is the state of it. And it's a bit of a chicken egg kind of thing with a lot of specs like that. Unfortunately, the chicken looks a bit like this. Into some of the attributes, required marks things as required, which is good for validation. Um, unfortunately, I've just noticed in Safari 7 that required doesn't actually work anymore because Apple hates people. <laughs> Placeholder is pretty awesome. Um, there have been so many polyfills and ways of doing this over the years that don't work properly. <coughs> Having it work natively for you is really good. So it gives people an idea of what you're trying to get out of them, which moves us on to patterns. Uh, a pattern takes a regular expression and lets you validate a field based on that regular expression. This one is a really simple slash d star, which will take any number 0 to 9 and any number of those numbers uh, into that field. You'll often see this as a way of bringing up a numeric keypad in iOS. Um, you'll often see it also as square bracket 0 dash 9, close square bracket, because most people don't know how to write regular expressions which is the problem. Um, my boss always tells me, wh whenever we get into something with regular expressions, is uh, you have a problem, the solution is to use a regular expression, now you have two problems. <laughs> Actually, before I jump ahead there, um, eVault's got a really handy regular expression uh, reference. Um, now, I, I don't write them very often, but when I do, I basically have this open in my browser tab so I can remember what I'm doing. Because regex is something that you do maybe once every six months, if you're unlucky. Um, but then you've forgotten about it next time you've done it. So ha having a really good reference like this one, it's been around since about 2003. And I mean, regular expressions have been in different operating systems for a lot longer than that. Um, so it's not exactly something that's going to be changing very soon. Usually when I'm developing regular expressions, I'll just uh, pop open a JavaScript console on a browser and try them out with a test or something like that. So this is our pattern from before. Um, once again, it matches any number. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 is true. If I put a string in there, then it's going to give me false. So that's perfect. Getting into some practical applications of that, Australian postcodes are four numbers. Have I written that right? I think I've got that right. Um, so here, 605 is not four numbers, so it returns false, which is good. 6050, valid postcode, it's true. You've got to be careful of over-validating. 
It might seem simple just putting slash D like that and four, but that's usually enough to let people get the right thing in there. Slight modification again, and we can take a four digit or two digit year. So you know, dropping these really simple patterns in there, suddenly your forms have got a whole lot more depth than they might have otherwise, and you don't have to rely so much on uh, server-side validation. Time gets a little bit more tricky. Um, this one accepts 24-hour time. You can see uh, we've grouped things together with round brackets, and square brackets allow you to uh, define a range of characters in there. With a little bit of modification, um, using a bit more grouping in there, and the uh, or, um, which is the pipe, uh, plus optionals, which is question mark, you can actually accept a wider range of what people are expecting to put in there. Um, most of my regular expressions that I use in the validation library that I've written have been with me for about 12 years now, and they've had um, they've borne the brunt, <laughs> to be fair, of um, the kinds of people that break hardware when things don't work properly for them. And when you deal with phone calls from people like that, then, then you make your regex work, you know, one way or the other. Because I, I wouldn't think that, you know, a period should be in an, uh, a time, but, you know, when someone's yelling at you on the phone, for the simple fix that it is, you can have your period in there. Dates seem quite straightforward to start with. Um, two digit, two digit, four digit. That's pretty simple, right? Except that's not really a date. Um, so then you look into a bit more and you end up with something like this. And I can understand if you're feeling a bit like this right now. I'll just calm down everyone again. So email, email's easy. Ah, not quite. Um, a at b.c, email's really straightforward, right? This one's, I've seen so many bad email validation things out there. I mean, a plus sign is perfectly valid in an email, underscores are perfectly valid, yet Somehow, people have written their uh, validation out there that stops them from happening. So far, my regex pattern's holding up really well until it falls apart because this is no longer a valid email address. So if I'm not that experienced at writing regex, I'm going to jump onto Google, might get to Stack Overflow or something like that, and you might end up with something like this. <laughs> this is a problem. Uh, that previous regex is 6.2k 6 of RFC compliant glory. Um, but you'd have to give that to every single person that you're doing. And the problem with reg regular expressions is most people have got no idea what they're doing one way or the other. It's nice to look at it, but I mean, even with the simple pattern we saw before for bringing up a numeric keypad, most of the references out there on the internet don't even get that right. Um, so all I can do is urge caution and make sure that you, you know, read the spec of what you're trying to validate. So this is my RFC compliant uh, regex. And really take the time to get it right or pass it off to a responsible adult that will do it for you. Security is one of those things that um, scares people and scares me, quite frankly. Um, when I'm trying to enter a password into something, just, just leave me alone. Like, don't put a regex. See, I'm not actually showing you anything. So this is the pattern that you're not going to put in. Because um, sooner or later, someone will get clever. <laughs> and they'll come up with these brilliant ideas of what each um, security pattern needs to be. And you can make this happen with regex. <laughs> but like it or not, sooner or later, if you make too many assumptions about what people are doing, you're going to get it wrong and really wrong. But then the counterpoint to that is this guy who I assume is named Bob, um, who doesn't even know what his password is, even though his username is Bob and his password is password. So you need a balance between, I mean, th these are here be dragons, basically. The balance between um, the person that has got no idea what they're doing, which is pretty much that dog with a chemistry set, and the people that do know what they're doing. And you need to allow the people that do know what they're doing to get it right. So you just get out of their way. Like, I'm going to write a better password than what you're going to come up with. And passwords in particular in the last couple of years have been hacked to death by pretty much everyone. There's very few major organizations that have escaped unscathed. I mean, Sony lost about 400,000 passwords uh, at one point. And the hackers are actually getting the raw database data encrypted, hashed, whatever you want to do with it, sitting in a database, as soon as I've got that locally, I can do what I want with it. 
So millions of these uh, genuine passwords that people actually use have gone out into the wild. So every, I mean, we're smart people. We're web directions attendees. We can, we've got these brilliant password schemes that no one's going to hack, right? But unfortunately, people like us have had our accounts hacked just like everyone else because of these massive breaches of data. So everything you thought that you knew about password security is pretty much wrong. And if you're trying to do pattern validation on passwords based on what you think you know about passwords, then the odds are you're going to be wrong, and you're probably actually going to make things worse for people than you'd actually think. Um, I mean, on passwords, the best thing you could probably do is maybe come up with, with one of those strength indicator things that will help the basic users get through. Um, but even then, you know, make sure you really read up about what you're trying to validate on. Otherwise, you're just going to make people not like you very much. Now, credit cards. This is one of the things that gets me more than anything else when I'm trying to put a credit card number into a field. What it, the pattern that it has on my credit card is something I should be able to put directly into the field that I'm entering into. And for the effort of someone to write a bit of script that comes up and says, sorry, you can't have any spaces because I don't know how to write a regex pattern, you can just write something like this uh, after you receive that form data. It strips out the spaces, and there you can send it into your um, payment stream, and everything's done. It's so, so easy to do. This is the, the power of regex, that you can actually manipulate data and do whatever you want with it with really simple scripts. One of the problems with um, HTML5 validation is browser support at the moment. Um, so as awesome as all this stuff is, uh, error messages kind of turn out like that if you're lucky. You can style them to an extent. Uh, and the, the Wufu um, reference I gave you before is a pretty good start just to see what you can and can't do. But it is a bit of a uh, minefield at the moment. I mean, for my own personal implementation, I've written my own custom library that um, sits on top of HTML5. So if my JavaScript doesn't load, at least I've got this stuff to fall back on. Um, but in terms of uh, user experience and things like that, HTML5 forms at the moment aren't exactly brilliant. They're better than leaving it to the server, but you've got to be really careful and, as usual, do lots of testing before you can actually um, let it go out into the wild. So in conclusion, are regular expressions better than kittens? Having seen what you've seen here today, you can absolutely argue yes, surely. Thank you. The, uh, sorry, the slides will be up on SlideShare later on because I've been playing with them so much, they're not there yet. Okay, thank you. <laughs>